when I was little, the river was a forbidden place. My grandma would tell me how there's undertoes and there's bad things and it smells. And when you got too close, it was unpleasant. When Northern Indiana was colonized back in the early 1800s, we completely and drastically changed the landscape. We took down the trees, we built our communities, we drained the swamps, and that had a really big influence on the St. Joseph River. The next big thing that we did to the river was we built dams. In Indiana, we've got four major dams on the St. Joe. Dams have a really significant influence on habitat in the river. In the late 1800s in the industrial era, we used to use the river essentially as a sewer. The thought at the time was, we'll dilute it, it'll go downstream, and we won't see it here. The problem was that everybody had that thought, and you're downstream from someone everywhere. Early 1900s, when the river was used as a sewer, we would actually build our homes facing away from the river. It was an eyesore back then. But in the 1950s, when we started treating our wastewater, the river cleaned up, and attitudes towards the river really changed. The next major milestone for the river was the Clean Water Act, which was signed into law by Richard Nixon in the early 70s. In the 10 years after the Clean Water Act was implemented, there was a definite change in the view of what the river was. You could fish, you could recreate, if it was clean. And it took a number of years for people to really start understanding that. And looking at historical biological reports from the St. Joe River in the 1930s, we found about three species of fish in urban areas. That's drastically different to what we find today with about 70 species of fish being in the St. Joe. It's really exciting to see some of the improvement that uh, has happened in the river. And we got a long way to go. I don't want to paint you know, too rosy of a picture. There's a, a lot of work, but there's work being done. There's work being done by the cities and there's work being done by farmers up in the watershed. And that's keeping things cleaner. It's making things better. Well, things really have got a lot better for the St. Joseph River. We still do have some issues. We still have habitat loss. We have dams that have influences on the St. Joseph River. We also have a lot of things that run off from parking lots, from roads, from agricultural fields. And when we talk about a watershed, we're talking about all of the land area that drains to a river. So if you care about the quality of the water in the river, you have to think about all the land that's draining to that river because what's happening on that land is what's affecting what's going on in the river. Another influence on the St. Joseph River is combined sewer overflows, also known as CSOs. In the 1950s, when we developed our wastewater treatment plants, we connected our sewer lines to our stormwater lines. And so after a rain event, we have these combined sewer overflows that get triggered and a mixture of stormwater and wastewater will enter the St. Joe River. South Bend, Mishawaka and Elkhart are under federal consent orders to reduce and eliminate those combined sewer overflows. The aquatics program has become an essential part of evaluating the impact that those CSOs have on the aquatic life. I hear stories from my grandmother about not being able to even put a toe in the river and the river would turn colors and be scary. No one wanted to go on it. And now, you know, I see kids swimming in the river. I go on the East Race, flip over in my kayak. I haven't gotten sick and I feel good about it. I feel like the river is this little ribbon of green, ribbon of life. I see beavers, I see herons, great blues, green. It's just really exciting to have something like that in a very urban environment. Over the next 20, 30 years, hopefully we're going to be doing a lot of things to help improve the St. Joseph River. The Elkhart South Bend Aquatic Biology Program will continue to monitor the St. Joseph River. It's important to look at our reports, find out things you can do to prevent pollution from entering the river, and find out ways to be active in helping improve the St. Joe River because we still have a lot of work to do.